Alright, so I got a 560 that I need to get ready to do some hay, so field ready. Uh, over the winter it sprang a leak, and right at the end of the season the alternator died. So we got through the season without it, so that's the main things I'm going to be doing is pulling the radiator out so I can get it rebuilt. And then after that, wiring up the uh, a 12 volt GM like three wire alternator. So pretty standard stuff, I guess. We'll get into it. What I know, I don't really know a lot about it, but we need to uh, pretty much just pull this chunk off, and I'll get the radiator out, and I'll make it super easy to get the alternator done in there and easily installed. So, so we got all of the body shielding and stuff off. And there's just a bunch of bolts right here, there, 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 that hold in the radiator, the top one, obviously, the hoses. After that, we're going to try to get the bottom hose, drain it off, kind of, and then I believe it should pull up, and then I'm going to grab the camera in a second and show you where it's leaking, so you know I'm not crazy. Alright, so you can see right in here that it's leaking pretty good, and then... On the opposite side, you can just kind of see that it's dripping through too. So we're going to pull that out. Hopefully we can catch most of the coolant into this bucket down here. Alright, well, we're going to make an absolute mess in an attempt to catch some of it, but probably not. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Alright, well at this point in time I'm going to try to get this out and then we can kind of see better on putting the alternator in and getting that all lined up so it doesn't make a bunch of noise when I start it. So. All right, for when converting uh, a generator style to a uh, GM three wire alternator, the, there's a, a kit, it's pretty basic. Um, it comes with bolts to go here and here, but I got mine mocked up with uh, bolts here, then vice grip here, and then I welded all of this together on the backside, there's welds of this. So that way uh, the bolts in here could, wouldn't actually fit so, and it just looks a little bit better than having bolts sticking everywhere. So you just do that and then uh, adjust as much as you can. Use like a, a big flat edge to go from pulley to pulley here and then from the crank pulley to here just to get it all to plane out well and then not destroy belts. Overall, it's a pretty easy install and mock-up. It's just the wiring's the next part. So got to wait for some time wire to come in or 10 gauge wire to come in and then be done with it. Here's just an overview of how it's all wired up from the backside. I'll, I'll show a wiring diagram and all of that, but here you can see just the exciter wire that's wired to the battery. This 10 gauge here on the backside of the, this goes towards battery. I per personally wired it into the ammeter. This one right here in the one position runs to key on. So let me hop on the tractor and show you where everything's wired. I personally have the uh, 10 gauge off the stud of the alternator going to here, but that just goes from this side of the ammeter, goes through the ammeter, and then there's another 10 gauge wire that comes out and goes towards battery. And then obviously I have the, I think it's 18 gauge that goes to key on. And then that little exciter wire comes off the battery. So. 
don't know how well you hear me over the tractor right now, but I just wanted to prove that uh, the alternator is charging the way that I wired it up. And uh, it's truly a really easy and simple way to get an old tractor to work a little bit better. So. For wiring up a GM three wire alternator for a tractor, make sure to go and get the uh, original wiring schematic for it. Uh, I made sure and just like made another one so that it was easy for myself to read. Uh, go and color it so that it's easy to read, just to make it easy. And then from there I went and rewired the tractor wire by wire using the same colors the tractor originally came with so that it could, uh, I could run the pr tractor problem free. Uh, <clears throat> and then from there, I just removed the, the wiring for the generator and the generator itself. And the first wire that I had to put in for this was uh, the wire for the light switch, which is this green wire here. The wiring for the lights was originally key on only, but I just ran it from the common post on the starter solenoid to the battery here, just like this, so that there's always key on power, or key, key off, there's always power, no matter what. The first wire you have to make for the alternator itself goes from the first post, which is right here. Uh, it's an 18 gauge wire that uh, is the exciter wire that goes from first post here to key on down here, personally which color out here go first post here and then right there so uh, and the second wire that you need for the three wire setup is just a little jump wire from uh, second post here to the power post there. Uh, this also only needs to be an 18 gauge wire because there's not much of an amp load going on to it. The last wire that you'll need is made from a 10 gauge wire. Um, it'll go from this battery post to the battery or battery common. I personally went from uh, power post to the ammeter like it was originally wired here. Volt, volts out to the charge side. I ran it like this so that the uh, ammeter was still functioning and I just had a dead gauge. Um, color this in quick. Wait, sorry. Color this in quick. This is a really easy wire way to wire up a new charging system for your tractor and in many cases probably cheaper than going and rebuilding or buying the generator that you actually need for the tractor.